is NC Continental Prime. Um, Sulaiman uh, Leda will begin in South Africa where President Cyril Ramaphosa has asked his deputy David Mapuza to stay in his position a little longer. Ramaphosa wants Mapuza to wait until the transition processes are finalized. So this comes after Mapuza told mourners at a family funeral that he was on his way out and awaiting the president to make an official announcement. Mapuza expressed his desire to step down from his position following the outcome of the governing party's leadership elections in December. On Saturday, Deputy President David Mapuza confirmed his resignation following weeks of speculations that he will leave office. He announced his brother's burial service in Upumalanga on Saturday. Asanda Gwasheng, a political analyst, joins me to unpack this latest uh, development. Good to see you, and thanks for your time. Now, we understand uh, David uh, uh, Mapuza's uh, resignation letter was submitted on January 25, uh, not too long ago. So, what could be the reason for the president delaying his re replacement? Well, I think that um, they're basically just buying time because they're likely to have the cabinet reshuffle just before the state of the nation, which happens this Thursday. And so it wouldn't make sense to announce the deputy president's resignation today when he still has a couple of days to go to announcing the expected cabinet reshuffle. So it's not really that they say it's not going to happen, but I think it's just a matter of it's not happening right now as in today. But definitely, I think by the end of this week, we're going to have a deputy, a new deputy president as a country. Let's take the clock back a little, if you will, and uh, look at his tenure so far as deputy president. I think, uh, I mean, David Mabuza, it was very interesting, his, uh, his, his reign, I suppose, as deputy president. He spent most of it on leave, some of it sick, some of it, you know, at some stage, I think he was in Russia, uh, getting treated for some other ailment. And so he has been mostly absent in his role. Um, and it's been interesting to see just how long one person, and I'm sure Nigerians will kind of uh, understand this one, like how long a person can be absent uh, and, and on sick leave for before they actually are replaced. And it seems like, you know, uh, David Mabuza came into the role because he was given a reward for basically pushing and making sure that uh, Sarah Ramaphosa got the position at the last elector electoral conference, and he just came in to get his salary and do the bare minimum uh, until it was time to hand over the reins. There's, there's nothing really that I can say he championed as a deputy president. There's nothing that I can point to and say that exists or that program happened because David Mabuza pushed for it. He stayed very much in the background and was very much kind of uh, flying under the radar as it were, to a point of announcing just before the African National, the last African National Congress conference that he's not interested in any position. And uh, basically, he seems to be ready to be going into his retirement. Well, I think I caught that part of uh, Nigerians understanding what it means uh, to be often on your task as a politician. But again, let's look at, uh, talk more about the deputy president. Uh, he's the head of government business. Uh, and uh, But... Uh, as you rightly put it, he's uh, been absent. Should Mashatile be expected to take a, a more public-facing approach? Yeah, I mean, I think definitely he's going to be a, a lot more forthcoming because Mashatile has ambitions to become the president of the country. That's kind of an open secret. And so he's going to make sure that he's visible. He's going to make sure that the whole country knows the programs that he's championing, that the whole country is aware of you know, his achievements so that come the next ANC elective conference, he then can be in the running to be the president uh, of the country. And we've seen in previous ANC conferences that the deputy presidency does really give you a high chance of becoming the president and in fact uh sir i mean sorry in fact david mabuza is one of the i think one of the first people who was the deputy president and didn't seem to be interested in the actual presidency often the deputy president job is almost like a, a kind of rehearsal for the presidential job we saw that with uh, mandela had tabo Beki as his deputy president and then tabo Beki had jacob zuma as his deputy president 
and then Zuma had Sarah Maposa as his deputy president, and now David Mabuza is kind of showing us the first sidestepping um, that South Africa has seen of a deputy president, because what would normally happen is that he would then kind of become president. I mean, most South Africans, I think, are glad that Mabuza is not the one that's taking over and uh, becoming the president, because he himself has a very bad track record of corruption, particularly in, in his province that he comes from. He's known, you know, as some kind of mafia, people call him, and uh, there's various allegations of corruption against him. And so it may be that part of why he's trying to disappear very quickly without any drama is because he wants to kind of fall off the radar and be forgotten about, because I think he still has, you know, some questions to answer for in many, many cases from his time as part of, the, as a premier and part of what was then known as the Premier League during President Thabo I mean, sorry, during President Jacob Zuma's tenure, where there was wide-scale corruption and it was led by uh, various premiers across South Africa. Asanda Ngwajeng, and thanks for speaking with us. Thank you.